the oldest science in human history. Thousands of years ago, people were turning their eyes to the sky and wondering what was out there. Today, telescopes peer billions of miles into space, observing events which happened long before our solar system was even born, seeking the answers to very big questions. What are the origins of the universe? How old is it? And are there any signs of life out there? Where have we come from? Where are we going? And are we alone in the universe? Questions don't come much bigger than that. Scientists can't say why the universe was created, but they can answer questions about how and when it all began. Astronomers have been looking through telescopes for nearly 400 years. And now they're looking for even more clues by shooting telescopes way up into space. Liftoff of the Space Shuttle Endeavour with NASA's newest tracking station in the sky. But getting up into space is no easy task. Isaac Newton himself realized that there was a velocity, a velocity so fast that if you hurl something into space, it would never come down. That velocity is about 11 kilometers per second. Now that sounds like a fantastic velocity until you realize how big the solar system really is. It would take about two months traveling at 11 kilometers per second just to reach Venus, a nearby planet. Perhaps six months to reach the planet Mars. Perhaps eight months to reach the sun. Now think of the nearest star. The nearest star is trillions of miles away and it would take perhaps 120,000 years traveling at this fantastic velocity to reach the nearest star. That's how vast the universe really is. We have been able to send small spacecraft to survey the planets and the sun, but the nearest star is five light years away. That's nearly 30 million, million miles. If we want pictures of distant objects like that, we still need a good telescope. Four. Three, two, one. The space shuttle wasn't built only to take people into space. It's been used to launch dozens of satellites carrying instruments to examine the universe. Away from the Earth's atmosphere and pollution, they can get a far clearer view. One of the most valuable has been the Hubble telescope, named after Edwin Hubble, one of the most celebrated astronomers of the 20th century. It took 10 years to build and was launched from the shuttle in 1990. Unfortunately, scientific experiments don't always work right the first time. And when Hubble sent back its first pictures from space, the astronomers were devastated because this is the sort of thing they got. Look at it. It's all blurred. There'd been a tiny miscalculation while they were making the big mirror, and as a result, all the pictures were out of focus. It was a tragedy. Astronauts returned to space in 1993 to install a contact lens to correct the fault. The revitalized telescope gave us amazing views of the universe. It revealed spectacular images of exploding stars, and of gas clouds where stars are born. The telescope is the nearest thing we have to a time machine. The deeper it looks into space, the further back in time it sees. Space is so vast that light from those very, very distant stars travels for millions of years before it reaches us which means that we can't see what they're like now, only what they were like millions of years ago. In 1996, scientists began an experiment called Hubble Deep Field to peer into the most distant regions of the universe. They maneuvered the Hubble telescope to focus on what looked like an empty part of space. As each day passed, 
the telescope produced images of more and more distant galaxies, further and further back in time. Finally, on day 10, it showed the universe as it had been in its infancy 14 billion years ago, revealing galaxies that had formed a few hundred million years after its creation. The Hubble telescope was looking at a fantastically narrow little bit of sky. Uh, look at this 50p piece. Can you see the Queen's head? Can you see the Queen's eye? It's absolutely tiny. And if I hold that 50p up at arm's length, then the area of sky that the telescope was looking at is about the same as the area of the Queen's eye, just a tiny, tiny hole in the night sky. And in that tiny hole, they could see dozens of galaxies. And in every one of those galaxies, millions of stars. And the point is, it wouldn't have mattered where they had pointed this telescope, they would still have seen millions and millions of stars. It makes us feel kind of insignificant, doesn't it? But these pictures were much more than snapshots of outer space. They provided evidence to support what had once been one of the most radical theories about the universe. The theory came from the man who gave his name to this amazing telescope, Edwin Hubble. Edwin Hubble, one of the greatest astronomers of the age, was a very strange chap. First of all, he came from Missouri, from the backwash of modern society. However, he was very ambitious. Edwin Hubble was one of those infuriating people who are good at everything. Athletic and brainy, he came top of his class, though he was two years younger than everyone else. And he won scholarships to the universities of Chicago and Oxford. And at that point, he's dazzled by upper-class British society, and he begins to put on the affectations of an Oxford don. He begins to put on golfing trousers and tweeds, and he begins to put on a British accent. So here we have this young gentleman of very humble means putting on the affectations of upper-class British society. But when it came to choosing a career, Edwin fell out with his father. His parents wanted him to become a lawyer and make money. However, he had this childhood passion with the stars, and that propelled him on the way to become the greatest astronomer since perhaps the time of Kepler and Galileo. To satisfy his parents, Hubble did study law at university, but he spent his spare time studying the stars in the observatory and made astronomy his career. Let me know when we get close to the right okay, coordinates. Okay, okay, steady, steady, okay. steady, 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 stop. Okay. This is the sort of telescope that a lot of astronomers used in the 1920s. It's an eight-inch refractor. It's got lenses in it, and it's powerful enough to see the sun or a star the size of our sun from a distance of about 100 light years. Now, do you think that Hubble was wise to take up astronomy rather than the law? Oh, yes, very much so. I mean, I'm sure he would have made a lot more money doing law, but astronomy is much more fun. But it wasn't just fun that got Hubble interested. He wanted to find the answer to the big question all astronomers were then asking. How large is the universe? To do this, he needed to get his hands on the biggest telescope he could find. He got himself a job at Mount Wilson Observatory in California. Its brand new 100-inch reflector telescope could reveal details about stars which no one had guessed at before. Hubble's main interest was in nebulae. Nebulae is the Latin word for clouds, and that's what most astronomers thought they were, clouds of gas out there in the Milky Way. These early photographs look grainy and crude, but they were the best that could be achieved with the technology of the time. And it could be hard work, even though Mount Wilson is in California, the observatory is on top of a mountain and it 